What's up? CJ here. Got a little bit of a different video today. I'm just going to rant. I'm just going to talk about my thoughts. And uh, you can tell me what your thoughts are in the comments, whether you agree, disagree, whether you're feeling the same way, etc. But I used to enjoy programming. Now, my days are typically spent going back and forth with an LLM and pretty often yelling at it or telling it that it's doing the wrong thing and getting mad <laughs> that it didn't do what I asked it to to begin with. Um, and part of enjoying programming for me was enjoying the little wins, right? You would work really hard to make, make something, build something, or to fix a bug, or to figure something out. And once you figured it out, you'd have that little win, you'd get that dopamine hit, and you'd feel good about yourself and you could keep going. Now, I don't get that when I'm using LLMs to write code. Um, essentially, once it's figured something out, I don't feel like I did any work to get there, and then I'm just mad that it's doing the wrong thing, and then we go through this back and forth cycle, and it's not fun. It's not fun at all. Now, I tried to think about why did I become a programmer? Why, why, am I, why did I do this job? Why have I done it for so long? Why did I make this my career? And you might have different reasons for this, but one of the reasons I like programming is because it is predictable. It's logical. It is knowable. You can look into the documentation for something or look under the hood and look into the source code or decompile something or watch network traffic. Like You can figure things out. And once you have a good idea of how a programming language works or how a system works or how an app works, you can be sure that it's going to work that same way the next time you look at it. And that's because uh, computers are logical systems. Programming languages are, are logical, formal logical languages. And that works really well with my brain. Now, when we're working with AI and LLMs, it's not predictable, right? You can use the exact same prompt and get a different response every single time. And I think this is where some of my frustration is coming from because I am trying to do the same thing. I'm trying to develop workflows and be a prompt engineer or a context engineer, but doing the exact same things is producing different results. And honestly, that's not what I signed up for, right? And you could chalk it up to skill issue, but just just look look at the look at the evidence, right? So if if you're chronically online like I am, and you're watching all of these these tweets that come out from people and posts that are just talking about, oh, you have to write this specific prompt or use this specific workflow, and it'll start working. And if you're not doing it, then it's a skill issue. I've tried it. I've tried so many different things. I found things that have sort of worked, but then they stop working. Or I've been working with a, a, a specific model like GPT-40 or GPT-5, and all of a sudden I'm getting different outputs, right? Because I'm not in control of that LLM. It's a, it's a magic box hosted in the cloud that can change at any moment, but it's always called the same thing, GPT-5 or Codex whatever or Sonnet 4.5, right? They put this little name on it, but that doesn't mean it's going to be the same every time. They're constantly tweaking the model, which means you're going to get different outputs for the things that you're running. Um, now, um, I'm looking at my notes cause I'm trying to rant, but I have, I have a lot that I want to say. <laughs> um, yeah, I have a note here. I mean, I don't know how, how you're going to agree with this, but it kind of feels like AI based programming has become kind of like a religion, right? You have all these, these big popular people on Twitter. They're kind of like the, the religious heads that come up with ways of working and tools that you should be using. And if you follow their, their patterns and you follow their tools, then magically your code will start to work. And if you use these specific incantations or, or prompts, you'll get specific types of outputs. But it, it's just not predictable. You don't get those same outputs. Um, and it, people chalk it up to skill issue, but I've worked with it long enough and tried it long enough that um, I'm, I'm kind of done. And to prove it to you, I want to just go through all of the things that I've figured out and all of the things that I do when I'm working with AI to write programs. Because you can tell me, am I missing something? And also, maybe you could learn something because I've, <laughs> I've been spending a lot of time uh, with these tools and, and trying to figure out workflows. So... Here's what I know. If you're working with Claude or any other editor, um, or so like Claude is a CLI tool, you could use an editor like Cursor or whatever else. They typically have some kind of markdown file you can put a bunch of information in. So with Claude, it's Claude.md. You can also use agents.md and Cursor. There are Cursor rule files. But basically, the idea with these files is you can put a bunch of things in there that try to make the work with this AI more predictable, right? You can talk about what tools do you use, what patterns do you use, what uh, libraries do you use, what dev commands there are, what's the architecture of the app. You can put all of this in these files, and AI is supposed to use that to steer it in the right direction when it's working on your app. 
Um, and also AI tools can actually automatically generate these. So you don't even have to work hard to build out these files. It can generate them, you can validate them. And now in an ideal world, you have told the AI how it should work and what it should do. In my experience, it doesn't, it doesn't listen to what I've put in those files. Um, and I think this comes down to context bloat, which is a whole other thing. But I have worked so hard at crafting like the perfect Claude.md and the perfect cursor rules. But still, every now and then, the AI will drift and run commands I told it not to or do things in a way that I told it not to. And I have no fix for this. So that's extremely frustrating. Um, the other thing is when you're working with AI, uh, don't ask it to just code without making a plan first. So this is my approach to building and, and, and working on things with AI is I'll ask it to build work, uh, I'll ask it to come up with a plan. So I'll say, plan this out. This is what I want to build. This is what we want to do. Let's come up with a plan. And typically, I tell it to write that into a markdown file. So plan.md. Because I don't want to lose that in the chat window. I want that to be basically a part of my code base that describes what we're building and, and what's coming next. What are the different phases? And AI is pretty good at coming up with this. And then I have to do the work of validating it and making sure that it's a good plan. And then from there, um, don't just immediately say, okay, the plan is good. You have obviously have to approve it and then gradually work through the plan. You wouldn't just say, okay, now go implement this 30 step plan. You would work on one step at a time. You would tell the AI to work on a specific phase. You'd validate its output and then you'd move on. I've done this for lots of apps um, and it, it works for some, but again, every now and then it starts to drift, right? The, the same prompt gives me a different output or the rules that I gave it, it starts to drift from it. It doesn't follow those anymore. Um, and there are, uh, there are tools that have been built that allow you to work in this way specifically, right? So Kiro was one of the first to popularize it, but GitHub has come out with, I think it's called like Spec Kit. Uh, you might see on the channel that um, Scott is actually working on his own list of uh, open code commands and agents that kind of like give you this more structured flow for working with AI. And I think it's like, it's uh, it's it, it basically it makes you feel like you're doing the right thing because you're gradually working through steps. But there are so many places where an AI could do the wrong thing and you don't realize it because you can become so accustomed to kind of just like accepting the output or or not completely validating everything. And so for me, spec driven flows are decent, but they're not perfect. And I've gotten better results by just writing it myself and not having to depend on the AI. The other thing is you typically work on the smallest feature possible, right? Don't tell AI to go off and build your entire app with a single prompt. You're, you're prompting it with very specific things that it should do and not giving, not allowing it to do big, full sweeping changes, right? So I, I've worked with AI this way a lot as well. Uh, and then the other thing is getting AI to validate itself. So, right, so AI can write tests. So you have it write tests so that way it can run the test to make sure that the code that it just wrote is actually working. Uh, it can also do interactive debugging. So I have MCP servers set up that allow it to launch a web browser. So I use the Playwright MCP. So when it's building out a web app, it can actually, after implementing a feature, launch the browser, click on buttons, and make sure that the feature worked as it expected. However, a lot of these AI models are typically, like, they're, they're goal-seeking. And their goal is to get things working, which means they will write tests that are not logically sound, right? or they'll write simple tests that actually skirt specific edge cases so that the tests will pass. Or the worst thing that I cannot get AI to stop doing is when it's writing TypeScript code, if it can't get the TypeScript to work, it'll just put in the any type and be like, oh, we'll fix that later. Or the other thing it'll do is it'll comment, if it can't get a, a test to pass, it'll comment out that test and be like, oh, I couldn't get the test passing, but I commented it out and now everything's working. <laughs> and it just drives me insane. But I think it's because these models are, are like too highly tuned to be goal seeking, right? They're not actually trying to figure out the problem or write really good tests or actually solve these things. They're just trying to get to a point where they can stop running and say, hey, I'm done. And uh, it's very frustrating. Um, and then the other thing you do is agentic workflows. This is the new hotness, right? Everybody's writing their own custom agents. And I tried this out in Cloud Code. They were one of the first to add agents. And you can basically try to solve this uh, context problem, right? So you can have cloud.md, but sometimes cloud.md might get too big or your cursor rules, you might have too many. But with agent files, you can create specific agents like a UI expert or a test expert or a database expert. And each one of those agents can have its own specific description and can also have notes about architecture in the app or how it should work or what tools it should use for those specific types of things. And that makes it so that sometimes, or for the most part, it'll try to do the right thing because it's not trying to cram the entire list of cursor rules or the entire cloud.md into the prompt. It's just the prompt for those specific agents. 
And that seems to work okay, but again, I run into issues where the agents are running the wrong commands or not writing good tests, um, and it just hasn't worked for me. Um, again, you could chalk it up to a skill issue, but I've tried it. I've tried it, and, and they really don't work that well. Um, so th that, th these are all the, the things that I, I do to try and make AI work. Um, there's probably other stuff that I missed here. If you do other things that I haven't listed, please let me know in the comments because this, this is the current knowledge and state of things as I know it, right? This is how we should be working with AI. And personally, it just doesn't work as good as they say it should, and I, and I don't enjoy it. <laughs> so that's, that's my main point there. Um, yeah, and so my other point here is, okay, I, I just railed off, rallied off all this stuff that I know about AI and all the things I've been doing to work with it to try to get it to work. And typically what you would see online is if you haven't been using these tools and you haven't been trying them out and trying these specific flows, you're falling behind. You're going to become a basically a uh, useless developer that's not up to date on the times and that like can't use these tools and can't work in the right way. And I disagree. I disagree. All of the stuff that I just listed off, I could learn in a week or less, right? Because as programmers, as developers, we spend our entire careers figuring things out, right? It's literally part of our job. And all of the stuff that I just listed are things that you could figure out. It's not something that you need to spend a year with. I'm confident that I could spend a week with this stuff and still be getting the same results that I'm getting now. So the argument that if you don't stay up to date on this stuff or if you're not using these flows, you're going to fall behind, I think is invalid because of who we are. Now, if you're completely new to programming, I don't have any advice for you. I don't know what to say because you you kind of – actually, I do have advice. My advice is learn to actually program. Don't just try to vibe things because you're going to hit walls where the AI can't figure it out, and then you're not going to be able to figure it out either. Um, and the thing is I rarely hit those walls because when AI can't figure it out, I figure it out because I've been doing this for a long time. So, yeah, that's my advice for any of you that are new to the field is just learn the field without AI because that's what the rest of us did, and uh, it, it works. It works. Yeah. Um, another note I have here is everything's just competing for your attention and your money. If you spend any time on X, there is a brand new model launching every single day. There's a brand new coding tool. We did an AI coding tool tier list here on the channel, and there's just so many comments mentioning like, oh, you didn't mention this tool or you didn't mention this tool. There's literally 10 dozens, dozens of, of tools that you should be using to uh, build out your stuff. And uh, they're all marketed in a way, well, if you use this tool, it's going to work exactly as you need it. And I've tried, I've tried a lot of the tools. I really have. They're all just wrappers for the foundational model, models released by OpenAI, Anthropic, and Google. And then um, a few others. So there's like Quinn and, and like the, the smaller companies. But basically, they built the models, and everyone is just building tools that are wrappers around those models. And of course, they all have slightly different agentic flows. They have all slightly different tools built in, slightly different planning tools. And that might give you a slight edge when you're working on your stuff, but it's not that much of an edge. And at the end of the day, all of these tools are, are iterating so fast that they're all kind of reaching feature parity and informing each other on what they should be adding. And all of that to say, use the tools that work. So uh, even with all these tools that have been coming out, I basically just stuck to Cloud Code and Cursor. I definitely want to give OpenCode a try, but those are the ones that I've stuck to. And but please tell me, if I would have used any of the other tools, would I still have run into the problems that I talked about at the beginning of this video? Maybe not, but probably, right? Because they're all based on the same models. Okay, so I, I think I'm done. Um, I think I'll end this with uh, what, what am I going to do? What are you going to do? And I have decided that I am going to take a one-month break from AI coding tools. I am going to spend a month where I write the code and I make the plans and basically just go back to how I was doing the things two, three years ago. Um, and uh, we'll see how it works out. Um, and... Ultimately, I'm going back to what I enjoyed, right? Because I talked about it at the beginning of the video. That's what I enjoy about programming. That's what I enjoy about this career and uh, this job. And um, maybe it'll make me feel a little bit, little bit better because I'm not yelling at an, an LLM every day. Um, now, I do realize that I'm, a very, I'm in a very privileged position, right? So I work at a company that does not force me to use AI. And if anything, it encourages me to explore different AIs or different ways of doing things. And I, I basically have complete and total freedom. I realize that some of you out there are being forced to use AI by your work. Um, and you, you kind of have no choice. So for that, I, I don't know what to tell you. I, I think maybe you could... Pretend like you're using AI, but then maybe go back go back to doing the things you ate the way you were doing them before. 
And I also realize that not everyone is building the same kinds of apps I'm building or running into the same issues, but but that's potentially because we're building different things. And so um, you can have your complaints about what I talked about, but I would say that if you're trying to build the same things that I'm building, you would be running into the same issues, and I'm very confident in that. Um, okay, that's all I got. Uh, I think I'll check back in a month and let you know how things went. And um, yeah, let me know if you like this kind of video. Uh, my plan is to not edit it. You'll see if there are any cuts. I think it's just straight straight to the camera. <laughs> uh, but that's all I got. Let me know what you think, and uh, I'll catch you in the next one.